Hello everyone, welcome back to the Weekend Filmmaker channel. My name is Diogo Tadini and today I want to tell you why I stopped using Canon cameras. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a huge fan of Canon cameras and I'm still I'm a huge fan of Canon cameras, don't get me wrong. However, a little while ago, I decided to get my first Sony camera. So I bought an A6500, Sony A6500, which I'm filming now. That's the camera that you can see me. And to be honest, I do not regret. I had some assumptions before that everybody was posting the same kind of color style and they kept saying that they're the color science of Canons are better, but then Sony cameras are good in low light and all this kind of mix you know, mis I'd, I'd say more like misconception. So I decided to actually have my own opinion and then buy a Sony camera and see how it looks. But not only for the looks, the pros and cons with both cameras. For example, the A6500 is something just like slightly bigger than a camera like this, the Canon G7X. There you go, focus, focus, focus. So it's slightly bigger than a uh, Canon G7X. However, there is it's more like a DSLR, so you can you can use interchangeable lenses, and obviously it makes the camera slightly bigger. But there are some pros and cons, as I said. For example, with this camera here, I cannot plug in a microphone, so that's a downside. This is a great little camera if you're starting vlogging or you just passionate about photography and you just want to learn a little bit more about how to take pictures in manual mode. Canon G7X. That's brilliant. This is the first version. I heard that they're releasing the third version. They had the Mark II. Now apparently they're gonna release the Mark III. I'm excited to see what they actually come up with. But for now, let's put this one down because that's not part of the plan. So the main reason that I changed to an A6500 was because of the vlog in the YouTube channel. But you may say, oh no, Diogo, but there's people like, for example, the MKBHD, other people like, for example, Peter McKinnon, they do actually film with RED C200, some people shoot on C300. Yeah, I understand that, but I wanted to keep the same style throughout my whole video. So if I have one camera that I can actually have it here to film the vlog here and also just pick it up, go to wherever I'm going and then carry on filming that's the camera that i want imagine if i had this camera for vlogging i think it's a bit like first things first it's quite heavy and it's not practical for me to have the c100 here and having the a65 for whenever i go outside i i do like consistency and i think that that would kill my vibe a little bit so i decided to then move to the A6500. Should I have the money to invest on a 1DX Mark II or 5D Mark IV or 6D Mark II? Would I do it? Yes. I love Canon and it's not only because of the color science or the menus that are great. I just love the look that you get out of a Canon camera. Which by the way, still different between Canon DSLRs and a cinema camera like the C100, C200, 300 or 500 or 700 even. So they still there is still a slight difference when it comes to colors and, and other stuff. However, I would happily keep shooting only with Canons. However, for the cost that Sony offers, for example, the Sony a6500, I think it's really hard to compete. If I could, as I said, I would keep all my gear Canon, at least for now, before I move to red, which is happening I think it's happening in about 152 years or something. But on a serious note, despite what everybody says about Sony's, about Canon's, about Nikon's, about Panasonic's, about any camera, literally any camera, what really matters is what's good for you. It doesn't have to be good for me. I mean, I love my Canon C100. Don't get me wrong. I do love my A6500. They're two completely different cameras for completely different purpose. For example, even with the 4K capability, I would not choose the A6500 over the C100 to shoot weddings, for example. I mean, I'm a crane operator. What basically I do is I stick my camera to the other side of the crane, three, four meters away, and I'm filming constantly. My clients normally want me to give a really long clip so then they can they can base the edit on my clip so that means that i constantly have to record for i don't know sometimes two three hours without stopping that means that i cannot have 29 59 minutes break or even if you actually add a battery there i think a, a power bank i think you can kind of 
somehow that I'm, I'm not interested in that because I'm doing something that is not meant to be done with that camera. For example, the A6500, I never had the problem of overheating, but I'm pretty sure if I shoot constantly in 4K with this camera, it will just, just go bananas and I won't have the camera anymore. So that's not really why I use that camera. This camera is specifically for my channel. There are many companies that use the A6500 for gimbals and stuff like that. And I still think that is amazing. It produces an amazing picture. You can still shoot an S-Log2, S-Log3, 4K, 1080, 100 and 100 or 120 frames, depending on where you are, frames per second. It's just, it's, and it's so tiny. It's amazing what you can do with this camera. However, again, it depends what you're using it for. For my use, YouTube channel, Sony, for now, all the way. For my professional work, especially with the crane, I'm not gonna give up this baby here unless if it's to upgrade to something like the C200, C300. But for now, this look at that, look at this, look at this. Look, hang on, this side, this the, a brick is a brick. Can you see it? It's huge. There's so much power in this tiny battery. I mean, it's big when it comes to like if you compare to an A6500 battery, for example, but. It's not as big as, for example, a V-mount battery, and it gives you about between five to six hours of recording time. It's insane. I mean, I don't have to change my battery for ages. I don't have to change my card for ages because the AVCHD codec in this thing just goes forever, especially the AVCHD. And people may say, oh yeah, but the codec is terrible. It's 8-bit, 1080, blah, 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 and all that kind of crap. I don't care. It works for me. My clients are happy with the quality that I extract from this camera. So instead of you being under pressure of what people think and what people say that the camera produce, you have to be happy. Your clients have to be happy. Only today I watched a video. I'm going to link his channel below. I think the name of the channel is Life Coast or Life... I can't remember. I'm just going to put here and link down below as well. He basically gave a summary of his 2017 and one of his complaints that the bad things that happened to him was that he shot an entire web series in 4K. And when he came to post-production, what happened? His computer could not handle it. I know you may think, oh, maybe he could just edit somewhere else, but that's not how it works. You have to be really, really precise to how you use your gear and how you choose your gear. You can't just be like, so that huge YouTuber just told me that 4K is the best way to go and he used the GH5 and I think I should just go and get a Panasonic. Do your research and make sure that what you get is what you need. Hang on, the train is just there. Can you hear? Prioritize your needs, nobody else's. People might say, you need 4K, you need 120 frames per second, you need 10 bit, you need 422, you need all these different numbers that just don't help you. So for me, for my needs, for example, I'm happy with professionally shooting with my Canon C100, still does an amazing job. There is a, an amazing quality when it comes to the readout. So basically it's a 4K and you get a readout of 1080, beautiful, clean. It's just, I, I have nothing to complain about. So besides all the double recording, I'm just gonna do a, a review on a C100. I know that is a quite old camera now, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be doing a review on the camera and the pros and cons of that camera. But professionally, I would stick with my C100. And professionally here on the channel, I would stick with my A6500, which is an amazing camera. Again, pros and cons, but for, for my needs, I have nothing to complain about. So guys, make sure that you stick with what you need for me i need a sony here and a canon there and that's what works for me and that's it for today's video guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did click on the thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you tomorrow for another video